Hello, my name is Rugare Gomo, and I'm a high performance coach. Welcome to your business summit where we have experts ready to help you navigate your life and business during these unprecedented times. Today, it's my great pleasure to introduce you to Daniel Tai, the managing director of AX3 Partners. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Rugari. How are you? Good, thank you. Thank you so much for saying yes to being part of this business summit. No, thank you for bringing me on. It's a pleasure. You're welcome. Now for the community, Daniel is actually also my personal accountant as well. So you get to actually meet my personal accountant who has helped me grow um, for, as a business owner and financially. And so some of the things that you're going to be learning today from, from him are some of the things that I already have implemented in my business as well. You know, Daniel is, was also the youngest auditor in all of Australia at the time when he became a registered auditor around the age of what, 28 years old then? Daniel? Yes, 28, that's correct. <laughs> Which is I can't say I'm the youngest now, but yes, <laughs> was the youngest. <laughs> it's like it's the, the young generation are like looking up to you and saying, no, we're going to crush that record. <laughs> yes, yes. It's extraordinary. And you have, you have, you sit on many boards as well of multi-million dollar companies, not-for-profits and other organizations and help them really grow and scale. You are not just an accountant. You are a person that helps people generate wealth and generate wealth sustainably, whether it's during the good times or during the new world order. And inside of this new world order, you yourself has, you've tripled your business as well. So I think it's really great to have this conversation with a, a person like yourself who in this new world order has actually grown and expanded. So thank you so much for your generosity. Thanks for the introduction. Yes, I, I, I guess being an accountant, people just put, put you in a little square box, but I wanna show them, hey, look, you know, we're not just an accountant. Like we've got, my whole team have entrepreneurial blood running through them and we wanna help businesses and how to think outside the box and how to really grow and scale together. Great. And that's the reason why you and I started working together because I've spent years, as you know, uh, betting and looking for accountants. And I was looking for an accountant that was also a business owner. So you are not just an accountant. You know, Daniel has already created multiple successful businesses himself. So he's not coming from a theoretical point of view, but you're in the game yourself of being a businessman and using your financial and accounting skills um, in the space of being a business person. So that's what's just off the charts about you, Daniel. Thank you. And, and exactly, I, I try to, um, I, I, I try to, whatever I teach to my client, I try to do it myself personally. And I'm one of those people that, hey, look, if I tell you to do something, I, 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 I better be doing it myself. So, <laughs> and I have first had experience of that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's so, great. yes, I, I pretty much, yeah, I own, so I started multiple businesses myself, so a tutoring company. So obviously my accounting firm, that's the fundamental of all my businesses, but I own a restaurant, a leasing company, a coaching uh, company, um, and also now a global distribution company, and actually, and a media company. There you go. You heard it first from Daniel Tai. At the ripe old age of 31. One. <laughs> so there's no, better, no one better to learn from than Daniel, who has really spent over a decade actually learning and growing himself to be this kind of person today. So thank you again. Thank you. So we're going to actually then jump into our main topic for today, which is really looking at the um, opportunities, the investment opportunities inside of this new world order. But before we actually look at that in the detail, I'd like you to share some of the things that your clients are dealing with inside of this new world order. So it's actually quite interesting because it, it actually, sh emphasis how remote working or uh, cloud-based, all this new technology has really changed um, the way business has operated. Um, and all the businesses at the moment that are struggling are the ones that haven't transitioned to um, pretty much online or digitally. So reason why they haven't, uh, they're struggling right now is because there's so many fixed costs in the business that they can't change. So for one of the biggest one is rental. Once they've rented the place, even when their uh, revenue drops down, they can't change the expenses there. Another one is obviously um, staffing. They're not flexible um, 
in where their staff can work. So that's really um, made it very difficult in this climate where um, they can't work remotely from home. So that's, um, and the lastly, the toughest one that a lot of my clients are facing is really cash flow. There hasn't been really much cash flow um, management or projection or even savings during this uh, uh, in their business. When a crisis happens now, they've got no buffer where they can use this cash to um, either pay the expenses or really, for me, what I look at is take um, use the cash to um, grab onto opportunities that appear during these crises. Clear. So three main things that your clients are dealing with are number one, having these fixed costs like rent, you know, that then they're stuck with paying rent inside of this new, in this new world order. And yes. then the second one is to do with staffing and the inflexibility of staff being able to either work remotely or even do other roles inside of an organization. And yes. then the third one is not having the cash flow itself, the real moolah that we love to yes. take, you know, <laughs> the opportunities that are in front of us or just to deal with the crises that are inside and within their business. Correct. You know, I completely see that inside of, as a high performance coach. That's also what I'm seeing that my clients are dealing with. So it's kind of uh, the trend right now inside of the business community. So how are you, Daniel, and how is your company helping people dealing with uh, these circumstances? So how I'm, I'm actually talking to every single one of my clients first is looking at their cash flow. So first step is how much cash reserve have you got and um, doing some um, cash analysis and also making sure that we are applying for all the government grants um, or any incentives or grants that we can structure to um, give our clients better cash flow or better access to cash. Because during these um, downturn in economy, um, when there's a crisis, cash is king. I think um, a lot of you would have heard that cash is king during um, these crises. It's because, the reason why cash is king is because there's so many opportunities that appear or that come during this period that you pretty much need to have the cash ready to take these opportunities up. So my, my first, um, I guess, how I deal with the clients is first thing is getting their uh, mindset right. Not looking at this crisis as, oh, how do I survive? But instead, change their mindset and how do you grow? How do you take um, the, uh, see these opportunities that appear in front of you and hold it with two hands and uh, utilize it in your new business or just, um, or how do I implement it into my business? Very powerful. You know, yes. what you just said is very, um, uh, all the things that I've also been implementing through your advice, making sure that I had cash flow, but fortunately, you know, working together, I already had cash in my reserves because that's being a good business person, having your contingency plan, even before you know there's something that's going to happen, but not everybody is going to have that. So your job is to find and help your clients get a new revenue of cash to deal with what's happening and Correct. that, and not for them to think that that's impossible. So, yes. you know, just like you've said, I've also, I've also applied for grants. I've also been, um, you know, um, elevating and increasing my cash as a business Definitely. There's, there's so many different grants out there that um, a lot of um, businesses aren't even aware of. So I've been trying to tell my clients, hey, look, try to apply for like, there's tech grants, there's entrepreneurial grants, there's um, grants to help you move to the digital space. And depending on which council you're in, there's council grants that uh, most people aren't aware of. And also there's a lot of um, the government incentives. There's actually a lot of planning that you have to do with your accountant that most businesses aren't aware of. So I would always suggest that you sit down and talk to your accountant and go, how do I maximize these grants as well? Because there's sometimes certain little things that you can do to maximize these grants that you're not aware of and timing, um, timing strategies and all those changes. Because what I've, even for you, Regari, what I've told you at the start of the year is very different to right now because of the grants and how they work and, um, and how they're structured as well. 
Oh, yes, we, you and I, we've had to, we had to restructure my entire financial planning in any case, but it was very easy to do because we already had good systems and processes in place. So I know you're providing some great advice, but if I'm a business owner who did not have an accountant like you <laughs> <laughs> to help them before this new world order existed, I'm already feeling overwhelmed. It's like, I don't even know where to begin to think about where these grants are or you know, how to approach these things. How would I start by uh, um, looking for these grants? So <laughs> it is, um, so the first thing is I, I do summarize a lot of these grants on my, uh, I've been actually just using Facebook, just posting it out and on our website. Um, but even through the ATO website, the treasury website, um, they do have um, all the grants listed but they are very complex and very wordy or even the government themselves don't even know what the, the grant's about. Um, so it is, um, yeah, I'm always happy if you guys um, want to have a chat, um, just go, hey, this is my business, share your accounting files. I can actually go and do an analysis and go, these are the grants you're eligible for and these are the ones that you can apply for. Um, yeah, and go for that. My team is all on top of all the grants and can always definitely assist. Well, I can attest to that because I've been getting my weekly update or my fortnightly update from you regarding what's possible for me. But you mentioned something that's really powerful there, that some of these things are actually complicated. And so for as a business owner who is in crisis, I ain't got time to try to figure out what the government is trying to provide for me. And even if I had time, it's so confusing, it's actually added to my stress. So what I'm hearing is if you're a business owner, reach out to an accountant and have a conversation. You Definitely. Know. It is, um, that's something you need to ha keep in mind. You have to get some, get some help. Um, during this period, I know a lot of people in survival mode, but your accountant can help you save a lot um, or apply for a lot of grants that can really assist um, you during this period. Fantastic. Um, and Fortunately, you know, inside of my communities, you've been made yourself available for them as well. So I'm very grateful that for my, com my, my business communities that I have, you've been a real help in that regard. Um, for people who have been in startup or even um, my communities with multi-million dollar companies. So um, it is important that you do talk to an accountant. That's number one, because there are many opportunities that are out there. Yes. And, and a lot of planning as well. This is the period where sometimes yeah, there's a lot of things happening around you. Sometimes you just need to take a step back and go, what do I need to do? What is actually the key, um, I guess, key things that you need to focus on? And um, it's a time to take a breather as well um, and go, okay, because business isn't as booming as, you know, a few months ago, what can I do differently with my business? And this is a time where you can actually focus on your business and grow it um, and actually work on your business. And again, I would always stress, plan it around the grants as well. Fantastic. Which then leads perfectly into like how then you help people with their business models and their growth strategy. So how are you helping businesses inside of this uh, new world order deal with their business models? So I guess every single business is very uh, different and how they transition from the, into this new um, business environment. So first step, I actually look at their business and see where can they uh, move um, online to the digital space. Even for my business, now I've hired a full um, digital team to really help me transition my um, face to face or my accounting team or to the digital space as well. How do we do, uh, do that? And how do we use um, technology with like cloud softwares and um, remote desktoping, um, Zoom calls? How do we do all that online? But with a lot of businesses, um, you can say, hey, look, it's actually really tough to, for us to transition over um, online, but there's always a way. There's always a way to find opportunities to change your business model. Um, um, to fit this new environment because if you look at it this um because at the moment I, I see a lot of um people still in that old mindset going oh 
when this crisis is over, I'm going to go back to my nine to five job or go back to the old way of doing business. I think that's the wrong way to think because by thinking that you think that nothing has changed, but during this crisis, it really showed um, a lot of businesses are failing because they don't have the right system in place or you can see a lot of businesses are actually booming, doing really, really well. And why are they thriving during this period? So these are, it's a good time to really rework your business to see how you can really, um, not just during this crisis, after the crisis, post COVID-19 is how do I change the way I do business and expand? Very powerful. I just love what you just created there, Daniel. It's a mindset because of dealing with it now. It's a mindset of that, yes, we can. Like it reminds me of President Obama. Yes, we can do it now. It's not waiting for a future that we don't even know is going to happen. But right now, it's like the mindset of we can alter our business right here, right now. 100%. No matter what business we are in. And that's what there is for us to continuously bring. And that's what I love about you being an accountant and running your accounting practice, Daniel, is that you are, yes, we can right now. Not let's wait and sit things out and see. Because when we wait and sit it out, there might be no business then to do it then. It's too late, basically. If everyone's on it, then it is too late. So there's so many opportunities and so many different um, areas. Because most big businesses at the moment, all they're thinking is survival mode. How do I survive this next six months? Whilst they, they are so concentrated on how to survive, our businesses should be growing and taking all these new opportunities up and finding, um, finding ways to capture market share where you wouldn't have had a chance to in the past. So this is a time where you can really grow your small business into a large business. When this is all over, you'll be like, I'm already, I'm already to find new clients, new uh, opportunities, new, um, new projects to take on because you have started right now and started planning for it. It's great. You know, I'm fast tracking my 2021 planning. I um, intend to have my digital online products started in 2021 but i'm all fast in tra- I'm fast tracking all of that right now you know with my team and i think it's just a perfect time with my team to reflect on our bigger game newly and yes, yes, yes. what new products we can actually add value to the world and we're just having a lot of fun in that in that regard not stressed about or uh, if we about what the future may be. It's like, okay, this is our moment right now to touch and inspire the lives of a billion people. And it's not in 2021, it's right here, right now. Correct, correct. And the the businesses that are doing really well is they learn how to adapt. They can Mm -hmm. adapt and change. So that's just one of the opportunities that I see. Now you have a wealth of information and opportunities you see as you also work with so many different kinds of companies. You know, you work with, you already work with digital companies, but you also work with brick and mortar companies in so many different industries as well. So it would be great to hear from you. um, What are some of the investment opportunities that you see right here, right now in this new world order? So obviously, you know, I'm not a, financial planner so I can't give financial advice but I can give you my view of some investment opportunities so I always keep businesses and investments very separate because I believe inside your business you should always be reinvesting your money your capital and growing that side when I talk about investment I'm more talking about your personal wealth creation so how do I from your business where's deriving income into actual investments where you're investing into properties, shares, mortgages, um, and other businesses where it brings you passive income. Because your business should be a place where you know you put your 100% attention in. Your investments is something that you leave on the side where it grows and makes you money when you sleep. So your goal is to really change active income into passive income. And that's how you really create wealth. And through the crisis, you can even look back uh, in history. Most millionaires are made through these crises because they invest into 
because uh, people are too too scared to invest at the moment, so they're not uh, looking to um, take these opportunities. Like for example, property market. Property market is starting to slow down. Uh, shares right now, a lot of them are at a discount of twenty to fifty percent. Um, and you look at um, um, even in um, also in the bond market, um, they are. Uh, there's all these different types of opportunities where back then when everything's going well, everyone's just throwing money in the investment market, but now everyone's pulling out of it. So the thing that I've been looking myself is always uh, blue chip shares. You can't really go wrong. So your blue chip shares are your big four banks, um, BHP. I look at, I like looking at tech companies as well because tech company is things that um, um, I, I, I just like looking at. So for example, Zero, the accounting software package that um, most of my clients use. Um, I've been looking at security index funds because I believe everyone's gonna move on to um, uh, uh, digitally in the future. And I don't believe that um, the digital cyber security has caught up to what we've done so far. So I've invested a lot of money into cyber security as well. Um, uh, what I really see in the next six months is uh, property. Property will be a big thing um, that I believe will be um, a good investment as well. Because right now, a lot of government legislation has prevented landlords from a, kicking out tenants and also protecting the landlords by not having to repay interest. But once that six months, six month grace period is over, I feel like there's going to be a lot of property opportunities as well. So, yeah, I think it's a great time to really keep your eyes open to um, the type of investments. And and I, what I always suggest to clients is they always ask, what, Dan, what, what, what type of investment should I invest into? Um, and I always find find ones that you're, A, you're interested in, B, that you've got a competitive advantage. At. So for myself, I look at a lot of um, accounting software because that's where my clients are at. Or I look at a lot of... Um, uh, tech companies because that's what I enjoy looking at and that's what I'm good at. Because if you're not, if you don't enjoy investments, then you don't have an interest in actually, you know, investing into it or even paying attention to it. So, in terms of investment, that's yeah, definitely keep an eye out right now. This is you can't. It's it's really hard to go wrong, and it is the time to invest. Don't be afraid. You know, you just stole the last two words from my, or sentence from my, my mouth where he says, don't be afraid because right there, you know, in this new world order, um, you're asking us to shift our mindset to actually yes. expand ourselves to invest. So uh, how do we get over not being afraid in this new world order, Daniel? Um, I think not being afraid is, even myself, even when I put put down investments, I, I, I still <laughs> a bit afraid as well, but it's all about knowledge as well. Um, knowledge helps you um, remove that fear and risk as well. So, but I guess the worst, worst thing and it's not investing at all because once you start investing and putting even a small amount, it will help you learn and, um, understand how investing actually work. So in terms of investing, first thing is actually you need to build up a buffer fund first for yourself. Make sure that you can cope with the rainy days because when I say invest, you're looking at long-term investments all the time, not just a quick throw your money in and get your money out. That's just gambling. When I talk about investment, it has to be a long-term, um, long-term, um, I guess a long-term uh, plan. So I'm talking about three to 10 years at least to get um, a good return on your investment. Correct. So yeah, um, in terms of fear, it's really about just, just maybe start out with a small amount and just getting used to it and, and learning about it. But yes, definitely have to start. The worst thing is not investing at all. Fantastic. You know, to wrap up, Daniel, you've given us some amazing amazing information. What I loved is you, you got to distinguish two worlds, our business world. Our business is there um, to grow and actively create um, our business. 
And yes. then our investments is our personal investment so that we create our wealth creation, which is meant to be passive. I loved the fact you separated those two worlds because I think as business owners, we tend to collapse them into one and the same thing. You know, our business is there to support our personal wealth creation so that right. we actually can make money while we go to bed. And Correct. what I loved about you is that you helped us shift our mindset to separate what it means to be a business person and what it is to also create um, our own personal wealth creation. And, you know, the underlining thing is that, you know, all of us as business people have fear. And I just loved your authenticity about that. And it's not just about, you know, putting money here and there and like taking money out and then putting investments. But it really is about looking for yourself and being authentic. Like, what am I passionate about? You know, yes. what is my passion? What knowledge do I have? And what are the opportunities readily available to me, which may be separate to what are opportunities relevant to you? And then yes. backing myself, starting small, but doing it with wisdom rather than gambling. Very, right. very right. powerful. You know, exactly. you, you actually summarized it very well. That's exactly what I was trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what you did say. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's definitely something I'm taking away, you know, and that's something you've taught me and you continuously teach me to think that way. So I really appreciate that. Is there any last thing you'd like to share with our community before we wrap up? Uh, I'm just very excited about this time. I, I know it's bad to say because I know a lot of people are suffering, but for a business owner and an entrepreneur, this is a great time for really to um, shine and um, and really grow your company. So to everyone out there that owns a business, I think take, take hold of this opportunity and really work on it and grow your business. Great. I think the last thing then would be, are you willing to share one new opportunity you have taken right here, right now, instead of the new world order um, that has helped you grow? Um, what I've done, or oh, I, I guess it depends on which business arm you're talking about. I'm, th I'm <laughs> thinking about uh, what you're doing, what you're importing from overseas at the moment. Okay, yeah, of course. So because of this, um, I guess, pandemic, this crisis, um, I believe health and hygiene is going to be a norm in future society. Even when this pandemic, uh, this whole virus is, I think is over, I think everyone's going to be very focused on, I guess, health and hygiene. So myself now, um, I'm a, I started an a Australian global distribution company where I distribute health and hygiene products. So my first shipment is um, hand sanitizer because hand hygiene is so important at the moment. Everyone's just realizing how important hand hygiene is. So I think um, products like that is going to be um, an opportunity. So I've just... Um, um, yeah, even myself, I just put a deposit down um, over for 200k for hand sanitizer, and <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, I really see that opportunity really popping up. So even myself, I'm looking at new business opportunities and business um, ideas to um, to uh, build. Great, and the, the great thing is that you're not just looking; you're actually taking the action, and that's what makes it so authentic working with you, Daniel, because. I know that when I'm working with you, you're, you're on the court taking actions alongside me as well. You're in the game as yes. well. It's not yes. just theoretical and that's just wonderful. So how can people connect and contact you, Daniel? So you can connect through, uh, reach out anyway. So um, normally I put a lot of content on my Facebook and Instagram so you can follow me there at AX3 Partners. Um, we're actually getting our whole website redone as well because we're gonna try to, like I've told all, a lot of my clients, is have to move into the digital space. So we're gonna do a lot of our tax um, planning, tax consulting all online as well. So we're gonna redo our whole website. But right now, Facebook is definitely the best way to contact uh, me. So if you follow us on AX3 Partners, I've got um, updates. You can have a chat to us there. Um, all our new, newest content is up there. So yes, definitely follow us through all our social platforms. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your generosity and you know, adding value 
to the business community. So on that note, you know, Daniel, um, I wish you all the best and looking forward to doing many more um, of these kind of videos to nourish our business community together. So I really appreciate you. No, thanks, Regari. Really appreciate it as well. And thank you everyone for listening as well. For everybody listening to this business summit, thank you for your generous listening. My team and I are there for you as you navigate through these unprecedented times. If you are interested in having a conversation with me, feel free to email me at connect at rogaregomo.com. Thank you very much.